Got to follow Gabriel and the narrator. Hard task. Has anyone ever dared you to do anything? Have they dared you to knock on someone's door and run away? Have they dared you to start singing or dancing in a public place? Have they dared you to dye your hair a crazy colour or wear something weird? Mm -hmm. Have they dared you to kiss someone? Have they dared you to eat something nasty, like a raw onion or an insect? I have been dared to do some weird things. I'm sure you all have. Some of them have been pretty ridiculous. From eating an entire packet of cheese footballs without swallowing, that was nice, to standing on a desk and reenacting part of a film in a French lesson. Did get into trouble for that one. Most of the time, if someone dared me to do something, I would do it. I'd swallow my embarrassment, I'd swallow my pride, uh, and I'd get on with it. But there are one or two things, possibly, that I just couldn't bring myself to do. Maybe that was sensible, probably. But maybe I just didn't have enough courage. As we've discovered this morning, Mary, in this passage in Luke, is one quietly courageous young woman. There she is minding her own business, waiting to get married to her fiancé, Joseph, and boom, this gigantic, otherworldly angel arrives in her space. But did you hear how she responded? At first, unsurprisingly, she is a bit confused. Confused, I would be beyond confusion confronted by Gabriel. She says, what does this mean? And when Gabriel explains that God is very pleased with her and that she's going to have a baby and that baby is going to be the saviour of the world, she responds simply by asking, how will that be? She doesn't say, no way, or you must be kidding, or that is going to wreck my standing in the family. With little or no time to even digest the significance of what Gabriel is telling her, she actually engages with this incredibly wild suggestion from Gabriel. Then, once Gabriel has fully explained how it will all happen, Holy Spirit and all, Mary accepts it. She accepts it without further question. She says, I am the Lord's servant. Let this thing you have said happen to me. How is it that Mary can respond so positively? Gabriel gave us a clue before he left. In fact, he told us that we can have the thing Mary had because of the courage she had and what she went on to do in giving birth to Jesus, the holy baby that would be called the Son of God. Mary had hope. What she already knew and believed about God from the scriptures and her faithfulness to it gave her hope that everything Gabriel was telling her was indeed true. Now, I'm going to dare you to do something radical today. I'm not going to dare you to eat a cockroach or a tablespoon of hot sauce or run around woking naked with your face painted blue. But I am going to dare you to have hope like Mary had. A hope in the God that you have come to know. A God who loves you. A God who always wants what is best for you. A God who came down as Jesus, as Gabriel predicted. Who came down as Jesus to show us how to live and who died for us that we might know 
through him, a direct relationship with God. Now, we know even more about God than Mary did then because we have heard and met him in Jesus. So this Christmas, as we invite so many people into this space, and at this Christmas, as we can share our joy, I dare you to have hope in Jesus.